Good day everyone, Grimmels here with another quick HAS 37 video. Today I just want to take a quick look at mission planning in the wing as well as a short overview on QFE on QNH. The HAS 37 is of course a strike fighter that was developed very much with pre-planned strike missions in mind and while the plane can be used without pre-planning with certain armament options like the Maverick missile it is not optimal and many of the Wigan's trademark interdiction missions require pre-planned waypoints for proper weapon deployment. Now setting those waypoints up in the editor is no problem and then you can load this flight plan you did in the editor into your plane using the data cartridge like you would in the real plane with all your waypoints and in pre-made missions this will generally also be the case but you won't always have a pre-existing flight plan in TCS for example if you fly multiplayer mission co-op or versus or just a large single player mission that leaves it up to you where you want to focus your efforts you might not have any waypoints in the data cartridge so let's take a look at such an example and how to make a flight plan from scratch and what to look out for. Now in this scenario we start with our little scout helicopter flying around behind enemy lines looking for targets. And eventually the scout does find an enemy position with trucks as well as rocket artillery and using the helicopter's known position, its laser rangefinder and bearing to the target we can easily find the coordinates of the target on the F-10 map and pass them on to get an airstrike on that location. And this kind of interdiction mission is exactly the right job for our JAS-37 Wigan, equipped with 16 Hydrag bombs in this case and waiting at Kovaletti Air Airbase to scramble and attack a target like this as quickly as possible before it can move. So let's go over the plan. We know the position of the target and we also know that there are enemy SAM positions a bit to the west of it, which we will try to avoid as much as possible. So our plan is to fly a bit to the northeast, around some of the known SAM positions, which are close to the coast, then attack the target and come back to Kobuleti. Now I pick two easy to spot landmarks on the map for waypoints 1 and 2, so we see right away during the flight if our navigation system as well as the coordinates we used are correct, and we get the coordinates of our waypoints from the F10 map. All we have to do now and what I am doing is input the coordinates for those waypoints into the Wigan, that is 1 and 2 to get to the target, waypoint 3 is the target and 4 is for the return flight. Inputting those waypoints is easy enough. We set the navigation system to the ref lola position with the selector and switch to input and start typing in the coordinates on the keyboard we got from the map. You just have to be careful to input longitude first and latitude second, which is the other way around than it usually is for some reason. Now after you typed in longitude and latitude, you just press the correct button for the waypoint, the coordinates are 4 and the waypoint is in the system. In our case we have four waypoints as well as the start and landing site, which is the same and already in the system. Now waypoints 1 and 2 are for our little T-tour to avoid some SAMs, number 3 is the target and 4 brings us back in the direction of our airfield. We could also input another landing site using the same method and the landing site button. In that case we could then also input the runway heading, which we would then be shown on the radar screen, in case we want to land somewhere else, and that can include roads as well as airfields. But in our mission we just want to return to Kobuleti. Now with our waypoints in the system I quickly select all of them and look at the distance and heading indicator to make sure the distance and heading of the waypoints is what I expect them to be. All looks good, so I guess I did not mix up any numbers. I also already set waypoint 3 as target waypoint, so we can move it as needed without affecting the other waypoints. And last but not least, before we start, I open up my knee board to get the QNH, which is quite important in the Wigan. QNH is the air pressure at sea level, or more precisely the air pressure that would be at sea level if we could go down that far, which up in the mountains you can't of course. Now I need that to more or less calculate the QFE at the target elevation. And I explain why in a second. Well everything is set up for now so let's get rolling and start towards our target. Our first waypoint is at a small island in a river so when we reach that waypoint that is what we should see if our coordinates were correct. But while we are on the way there let's go back to air pressure. QNH and QFE as this is an important part of planning and flying a mission in the Wigan most of the time. So what is that and what is it good for? Well, as I already mentioned, the QNH is the air pressure at sea level in the vegan in millibar or hectopascal, which is the same. 
a barometric altimeter uses the air pressure to tell you the altitude. At sea level it should read zero. But air pressure is not always the same. If it is higher than normal the altimeter at sea level might show you a negative number. If it is lower it would show a higher number. So in order to really get an altitude of zero at sea level the altimeter has to be set for the current air pressure so that it is calibrated in such a way that the current air pressure at sea level shows zero on the instrument. Now the QFE is somewhat similar but instead of pressure at sea level it is for the pressure at the point on the ground usually an airfield or a waypoint or target waypoints in our case. Again say we have a point 300 meters above sea level and we land on it. If we set our altimeter for our current QFE pressure it should read zero. If we set it for our current QNH it should read 300 above ground. And that is what this is all about. In order for the Wiggins computer to employ weapons correctly the computer needs to know the elevation, the height of the target above sea level. It uses among other things the barometric altimeter to do so. If you had just a system to say set the target is at 300 meters above ground put in 300 meters that would only be correct on some days depending on the air pressure. So we set the target's elevation directly over the air pressure at this day. Now our target in this mission is at 117 meters above ground. That information we can get from the map but how do we get the proper QFE for that altitude? Well there's actually one simple and quick way to do that. There is a rule of thumb that says that a change of one millibar in pressure results in about 30 feet or roughly 9 meters of altitude difference. We can now simply turn that rule around. We take the altitude difference between our target and the known point and divide this altitude difference by either 30 feet or 9 meters depending on what we use and then add or subtract that from the air pressure of our known point. Our known point in this case is sea level and the QNH, which we have on the knee board. QNH pressure in this mission is 1022.6 millibar. That is for sea level. Our target is on 117 meters, so altitude difference is 117 divided by 9 is 13. So QNH of 1022.6 minus 13 is a QFE at the target of 1009.6 millibar, which I have already set on the altimeter. I have already set that QFE because I fly low level to avoid SAMs, so I want to focus on flying when I get close to the target and not setting the QFE then. The downside is that our altimeter at the moment shows a wrong value, since I have it calibrated for the target elevation to be zero, not sea level for example. Not a problem in this case where I fly completely visual anyway, but if you do a mission in bad visibility you of course don't want to do that. Now the thing is this rule of thumb used to get the target QFE is of course not 100% accurate and the larger the altitude differences the larger the error you will get. So if you do this calculation from say sea level QNH to a point 3000 meters above sea level you will get a larger error. So it is always beneficial if you have a known QFE that is closer to the target elevation to make this calculation from there. If your target is say 2000 meters high and your starting airfield is say at 1500 meters for example you can use the airfield QFE as a baseline instead of sea level QNH and you have only 500 meters difference which is still pretty accurate. The QFE of the starting airport you have on the kneeboard and it is also usually preset. If you don't have the QFE of the airbase it is easy enough to get. Simply set the altimeter to show zero on the ground that is set for QFE at this point and you can get the altitude from the map again. If you reach target area and you notice that the target is for some reason on a different altitude, for example on a hill, you will have to adjust quickly with the new altitude, either getting it from the map if you can or simply estimate the new elevation from the old one as good as you can, again divide by 9 and then set it as the QFE. Well, meanwhile we have reached and passed the first waypoint of the mission and I could see the little island I set as a landmark, so we are on course. In this area the planes Terranav should not have any issues updating our position but it is nice to be sure. Now we are about to reach our second waypoint and I have set up waypoint 2 at a little bridge so we should see one when we reach and overfly waypoint 2 and from there it is only a small hop to the target which should be directly in front of us on the other side of a large river after passing waypoint 2.
So it's about time to get ready to attack. Again, we carry 16 high drag bombs which are used in CCIB mode. And how accurate the drop is will depend on if our target QFE is indeed correctly set. Now we just pass waypoint 2 and we can indeed see a small bridge as we do so. The next waypoint which we are turning towards right now is the target. Now, while our radar warning receiver was beeping at us for most of the way, so far we only heard the low-pitched sound of low PRF radars, search radars most likely. But now, as I reach the target area, I also start to hear another higher-pitched sound indicating a tracking radar of some sort, which is a bit worrisome, but nothing we can do about now. The target is coming up and I have to fly straight over it to drop my bombs. I set the trigger to unsafe, which switches the HUD to CCIP bombing mode, and we see two circles indicating where the first and last bomb should hit. The symbol seems to be well centered in the HUD, indicating that our QFE is set correctly. We overfly the target and pickle the bombs. And we get a good hit on the target. However, we did take a hit from a radar guided AA gun while overflying the target. I guess that was what was making the new noise on the radar warning receiver. Now, the right wing lost some lift, but nothing too bad, and we go down to low level to escape and evade further fire. After we are out of the immediate vicinity of the target, we should be safe from AA fire, and we should be too low for most SAMs to be effective against us at this point. Now, we are on our way to waypoint 4, again to fly around most of the enemy air defenses, and after that angle back down south towards Kobuleti. And land back at the base we came from to finish the mission. Now, the way back is uneventful despite some minor damage to the aircraft that leads to a tendency to roll right a bit. But we make it back home without problem, accomplishing our mission. So, that was a bit of an example on how to fly a mission without having the waypoints already in the data cartridge. In this case, against a target with a known position. If you don't know the exact position, like when hunting tanks, it might be better to use guided weapons like the Maverick. If the area you expect targets in is somewhat open, you can also use your radar to get the target fix on the exact target location. Another way to get the target's locations would be the Wiggins ALINT capabilities. ALINT means electronic intelligence. The Wiggins U22A ECM bot has the capability to record EM emissions, so you can go on a recon mission with such a bot and, if flown correctly, get the rough location of radar emitters like SAM sites or early warning radars and get them marked on your knee board after landing. I might make a video taking a closer look at those ECM bots later as well. Well, and this is it for this video. As always, I hope it was informative, thanks for watching and maybe I'll see you next time.